Hello viewers, SuperGT here. Welcome back. Thank you for joining. Now, the journey on the wheel continues. I'm still trying to improve and still trying to finish above sixth place. Now, you join me here on a very long practice session. You may well have watched the recent live stream where we are racing here at night time around Bathurst, get triggered Australians. And, well, things didn't really go to plan, mainly because... Well, you know, I'm starting on the wheel. Things aren't so easy just yet. And, well, it's this track. And I really suck around here. So, you know, the, the real answer is to put the laps in, put the time in, and just really iron out those mistakes. Uh, if you look at the bottom left of the screen, that is how long the session has been going on. 56 minutes. I'm on the 25th lap here. So a lot of time. I'm actually half a second up on my previous best. So it's actually taking me this long and I still haven't beaten my record there which I set a couple of days ago so you see just how long this is taking me but this is exactly what I need to start doing um, it's, it's definitely what I'd recommend anyone doing just put the time in and uh, really see your times improve so coming into the chase coming up towards the final turn four temps up so we should be able to beat our time as we come through into the final turn and up to the line what is the time going to be so 2.5 to beat and it's a 0.3 so almost below the two minute barrier but that two minute point three, very pleased with that time and ultimately after 31 laps of practice an hour and seven minutes finally bring this session to a close so hopefully that session there that practice will put us in good stead for a couple more races here. So starting fifth, and uh, that's a decent position. So on the on the live stream, as we mentioned, I was starting a little bit further back. And you know, when you're starting in that sort of eighth to twelfth range, things are really difficult. You're in that midfield, you get mired down, you, you get caught up in battles you don't want to be in, and um, yeah, things are difficult. But here, with that with that good qualifying time. I'm starting a little bit further forward with the faster guys at the front. So hopefully this can lead to some good results. We'll have a look and we'll see if that is the case. So Bathurst, Mount Panorama at night. Good to see a night race actually. Really uh, mixing it up a little bit. And uh, it does make it a lot more difficult of course. I mean this track is hard enough as it is when you can actually see where the hell you're going. I had to actually really tweak my TV settings. I, I you know, put the, I changed the contrast, put the brightness right up so I could actually see corners because um, with the standard setting it's actually really difficult. So I can actually see now where the hell I'm going. Now coming down the hill, this is a really tricky section. And I think I was overdriving it before I was actually going into the back of the Aston Martin. So I think previously I was trying way too hard to break like right on the limit and it just really wasn't working. I was, pl I was playing it not safe at all but now breaking a little bit earlier and I'll definitely refer to the guides or well, two guides I was checking for this um, one of key 25 so KIE 25 check him out on YouTube and um, David Perel or David Perel um, I don't know how to pronounce his name David Perel I think uh, really good really good guides for both of them um, on how to tackle this course and, and the race as uh, the Aston Martin gets it wrong he obviously hasn't watched the guide as he goes flying on at the chase. So up into fourth, that's a good uh, lap one, coming up towards the final corner of the lap. So up behind the Super there. Now I qualified in the Supra, so that session I just did of an hour and seven minutes, that was done in the Supra, which I think has got uh, pretty much the best uh, one lap pace, although the Huracan is actually top of the leaderboard at the moment. It's just got absolutely incredible top end, and uh, that that's down the very long straight, so you've got two very long straights here at Mount Panorama. So just coming up the hill now, this this turn here, just sweep it in, break pretty much as you go against, uh, go against the wall. And you want to get two wheels on that uh, white line on the left hand side. This turn you can take flat out, the car does squirm a little bit. Use the tree as your turning point for this one. You can go full throttle and then just straight line this section back over to the right hand side and dip two wheels beyond the line, sweep it in. As you go over this press, just release the throttle slightly let the car settle and the car should go over that quite nicely if you keep the throttle down 
Going over that crest, the car will just go a little bit mental. Doesn't like it. Dip two wheels on the grass as you go through the dipper. So coming down the hill then, sweep to the right hand side, looking for the blue wall on the right hand side where it begins. That's pretty much where you want to start braking. And the Spaniard is into the wall. And he too has not watched the guide of Key 25 and David Corral. So up into third. Now I'm kind of in an uncharted territory here. I'm not normally this high up. I'm actually losing oxygen because I again altitude sickness I'm not normally ever this high. But into third place, which is a decent return for the first two laps. Uh, one position on each lap. But now it really turns into a race of can I deal with the pressure, you know? Can I just settle down on the wheel? It's kind of alien to me. But um to try to churn out the laps, which of which I've done many, you know, 31 laps in that session earlier. So a little bit later now, a couple of guys go into the pit lane from behind. But they must have been knocking 50 shades of grey out of each other because the gap now has gone right up to over six seconds to the Spaniard. And by the time I come in here at the end of lap five, up to seven seconds to the Russian behind. Hopefully we don't bottle it on the way in. I break nice and early and you can see there not having to ask my mum where the rope is and uh, we get that job done just fine. So it looks like the silly little mistakes I was making on the controller are beginning to disappear. Um, yeah, this is only one race so it's not it's not the biggest sample size. We have to wait a little bit longer so I may well make mistakes later. So you see there the gap to max power uh, over two and a half seconds. So healthy advantage and of course um, by virtue of going in a lap later than those guys, I have fresher tyres. So I, I do have the advantage here, two, two and a half seconds, fresher tyres by one lap. And obviously track position around a track which isn't easy to overtake on, unless uh, you do have straight, uh, great straight line speed. Well, it's not too bad to overtake, you just have to kind of wait for the straights. Uh, going, down, going down towards the chase and going up towards turn two, Corey Bend. Okay, so let's see how we do through the mountain section and keep it nice and settled. It's the consistency which I've, I've been really pleased about on the wheel, which is so much easier to do, I think, compared to the controller. And I may well do a comparison video between the wheel and the controller. You know, as someone who has now used both, I think it's a, a fair video to make. And I would say that it's definitely possible to be quick on the controller. So if you are on the controller, you know, can be quick, don't give up completely. But um, the wheel is just, it's just that much easier to be smooth on the, on the throttle, on the brake, and on the steering, which is, well, everything that you need, basically. So coming across the line eventually, I'm going to finish third on uh, lap nine of nine, nine seconds away from the leader. And you know what? That's a good improvement. I know, yeah, nine seconds is a big gap, but typically around here, I'll be finishing 20 seconds off of the leader. So I'm really pleased with that. That was a really good result. And hopefully that puts us in good stead for the future. Uh, just a half a second off the fastest lap, 201.6 or just under 201.7, my fastest. So good stuff there and there are the results. So hopefully third, that is a hopefully the new sixth. Half, that's just half six and we get three. Hopefully that can be the new sixth, maybe. We'll see as we come around turn one on the next race and immediately get on the throttle a little bit too soon. I actually um, come across the track a little bit too aggressively as I was trying to correct the car and max power there onto the grass and he's going to come through on the left hand side. He's two driving the Lexus and that's the one thing that is really difficult. The transition from the controller to the wheel is not so much the wheel but really just um, the the viewpoint change. So yes, I mean a lot of people asking for Chase Cam to stay, but I've tried it. It's just it does does not feel right on the wheel at all. And I'm, I actually really like this view. And I think the progress I've made has been staggering so far. And I think I'm actually already quicker on the wheel than I am than, than, oh, sorry, than I was on the controller. I don't think I would have ever been able to do a two minute point three with the controller. So, you know, that's good signs for the future as well. And hopefully, here, we can um, go one better than sixth. We don't want to have another nightmare and finish in the dreaded sixth position. Hopefully.
hopefully those days are over. But that remains to be seen. So we've got a nice group ahead. The, the top two, the same top two in the previous race, so the Polish guy and the Dutchman running out quite easily away from everyone else. But there's definitely a chance of third at least, as you can see here, the group quite close. The guy in third at the moment driving the Toyota FT1, which really isn't very good on the straights, so very, very vulnerable as we go down these straights. And actually, the French guy around the outside into the chase and uh, up back into third position. We're getting a little bit cosy here as we come up towards the final turn. On the right hand side of Max Power, coming down towards the final turn. And not really a way through. Just having to back out. Frenchman going very defensive. Max Power looking for that move into turn one. Not quite there. Just, just dip two wheels onto the grass on the way in. And that unsettles the car. But we get through. Okay. And keep, keep fighting to live another day. So as we come up towards Rory Bend, can we get into that slipstream? Yes, but he in turn is in the slipstream of the car ahead, so I'm not really gaining too much here. As you come flying in, you've got to really hook up the apex, but avoid the kerb at all costs, because I've actually grazed the kerb there. So you touch the kerb, it unsettles the car, and you try and get on the throttle, and it just wants to spin. So you need to get as close to the kerb as you can without touching it through that turn two, and maybe there as well, that could really unsettle the car using that tree as a turning point so thankfully they haven't cut that tree down because it's a really good reference point actually as it happened for that corner this is where things can get really really tricky because this left hander here is very difficult very easy to run wide on the exit it's this little section here this is the hardest part of the track i think and you kind of got to lift off to let the car get pointed in and i'm a little bit wide through there but we get through just fine sparks are flying everywhere as the frenchman grazing the wall through this section, as I say, really difficult uh, area of the circuit to get right. And it is, a, it is a really hard circuit, a really, really difficult circuit. But I think after that practice session, I've actually really improved around here. And again, something I'd definitely recommend, watching the top lap times, just seeing exactly what they're doing and uh, seeing where they're gaining the time. And it's really just a matter of getting that front so early, just uh, keeping the car smooth at all costs. So coming down towards the chase, on the outside, and I'm going to get the job done. A really good move. I thought he was going to kind of block me out a little bit more than that. Didn't really fight it too much. And um, getting the job done around the outside. Back into fifth. So now can we turn our attention to the Toyota up ahead? Let's just try to keep in the slipstream range. I'm not sure I am at this moment. So just shy of eight temps behind. Really need to get within six temps, I think. Then I should be within that range. That Toyota, though, flying through the turns. It has absolutely almost unparalleled turning ability so he's going to be absolutely laughing through the mountain section it's just on these straights where he's a little bit vulnerable although at this point in the slipstream with the Lexus ahead so he can kind of get pulled along at this moment so coming up into turn two again just touching that curb means I just can't get the throttle as early as I'd like coming down towards the chase once again on lap number three so the Lexus once again in my slipstream and unfortunately I'm not in the slipstream of the cars ahead so I'm never quite sure which side to defend coming into here because of course you've got this kink to the right but then of course the main corner goes towards the left so it, it sometimes you can, it, defending each side can work but sometimes I think you kind of have to pick and choose depending on the exact situation so it's, always, it's quite hard to actually say which side is to, best to defend going into there sometimes it's coming through the final turn you see the gap there just opening up to the guys ahead as myself and Max Power just battling a little bit harder here as I wasn't quite on it on that lap and unfortunately just dropped off out of slipstream range and that's the kind of the crucial thing that you have to really really manage in a race just staying within slipstream range at the right time is, is crucial sometimes if you lose the toe then you're, you, you're losing a couple of attempts per lap so coming up towards turn two once again back up the inside so the fact that there's that big gap ahead means none of us are getting the slipstream therefore uh, the car ahead is vulnerable and I go back past so good racing between the two of us I actually really enjoyed this race the Toyota into the wall and thankfully these these two guys are really going hard at it which is uh, lending itself to myself and Max Power as we as we're fighting in turn but um, two guys ahead fighting too much maybe and uh, giving us a fighting chance of, of keeping up at least so 
Frenchman into the wall, had her most opportunities. I did sparks flying into the air. Here at bar first. Really, really tricky circuit in, in, uh, in the night time. Very, very hard to get right. But as I say, just change your TV settings so you can actually see where the hell you're going. And actually, it doesn't look so much, so nightly, um, depending on your uh, depending on your settings. So then, again, once again, you see the, the gap opening up, but then opening up behind as well as Max Power with a penalty and the gap opening, opening up. I think the Toyota made a mistake going into the bit, so he did come a little bit closer, so 1.1 behind. So I just need to have a really good lap here just to stick within range. We can see they're already um, by lap 7 making a mistake, and this is the big mistake going a little bit too late on the brakes into this section, a really tricky section. And unfortunately, just dropping right off. So there's not really much chance of a third or a fourth here. But I could uh, potentially lose the fifth and go down into sixth. But um, eventually crossing the line, we kept tackle, we kept the position and finished in fifth position. I actually had number eight on my car, so I should have finished eighth technically. Finishing a little bit higher than that, so good to see. So fifth. Let's hope that at least fifth is the new sixth. Third or fifth. I don't mind, but um, at least it's not sixth place. We go once again. Let's see if we can have a good result here. Starting fourth this time. So once again, we've got the Polish driver and the Dutchman, first and second. They are really quick around here. They're driving the... Oh, what are they driving? One is driving the BMW. The Polish driver is driving the BMW. And the Dutchman is driving the Nissan GTR. So, coming through the chase. Coming under the immoral uh, banner. Towards the final turn, uh, Supra goes defensive and uh, tries to get the cut back on him. The hard thing about the Supra is really hard to overtake that car because we all know through the mountain is just impossible. And then through uh, the straights here, the Supra is just ridiculously fast. So even in the slipstream, you can barely get alongside. The Lexus isn't too bad in the straight. You see here, I'm barely catching up, even though I've got the, the full benefit of slipstream. He's going to defend the right hand side as he's entitled to and go to the left. And late on the brakes, I was thinking he's going to overshoot it, but he actually hit the apex quite nicely. So good, def uh, good defending from the Spaniard as we progress around the lap a little bit. So someone up ahead uh, some, kicking some dust up into the night sky has come through, really putting that pressure on really, really close. And as I mentioned in the previous video, as he slides wide, I'm up into third. As I mentioned in the previous video, it gets really intense in this viewpoint. Things are so much closer. The car in front is literally right in front of you from this view. Things are very, very close indeed. And actually, you can judge. You can judge it a little bit better because the, I was guilty in the chase cam of hitting people in the back a fair amount because you can't actually see the front of the car always. So through here, into the left hander. He got back up the inside. I kind of got spooked there by a, by a, by a headlight. I couldn't judge exactly where they were. And I think I may well have just edged that German wide. By, um, by not knowing exactly where he was. And this is one of the things that is really difficult to get used to, the transition with the viewpoint, as we mentioned. Um, because, of course, with Chase Cam, you can see if they're next to you. With this car, you have to look at the radar. You have to look at the radar, look back at where you're going, look back at the radar, so it's kind of difficult. Now, I span it a little bit wide, and unfortunately, <laughs> well, it just turns into another tragic tale of another typical Super GT video, where, once again, we're fighting and I thought you get smashed into the wall brutally and I don't think he even got a penalty for that it was just a bit clumsy really but fortunately that's what that often happens when you go around the outside there although I was fully alongside so I, I mean I had a right to be there but unfortunately down to ninth we tried to have a nice little comeback here so this is a I suppose another test can we uh, can we fight back on the wheel when things aren't going fight your way you know don't give up and try to fight back and uh, claim back some positions at least so up behind the Hungarian driver here right on his tail coming up towards the final turn some guys still get to pit so we all gain a couple of positions so I, end, I decided to pit at the end of lap four rather than five go for the undercut instead so the main reason you pit at the end of five is just to avoid traffic on the way out rather than four normally you go for the undercut up the inside brutal move out of the way mate not messing about anymore so up into 7 by, by virtue of that overtake and of course some people go into the pit lane. This is the end of the race now, catching up with the German who 
who has a bit of a penalty, a small penalty, so I only have to finish right behind him. And I should probably beat him. So I'm going to go for it though. I'm going to go up the inside and try to claim that sixth position. I'd rather not finish here if I could avoid it. And he's just going to come back up the inside, sailing wide. Goodbye, my friend. Auf Wiedersehen. Mr. Germany, as he goes wide onto the grass. And it looks like I'm going to come through to finish in sixth place. I actually nearly caught back up with Wi-Fi password, who's in fifth, or well, well now fourth, and the Spaniard, who had a penalty. So not too bad of a recovery. So not an ideal race, of course, to get slammed wide, but that's the way it goes sometimes. Um, decent recovery, though, to come back to sixth position. Hopefully that isn't a sign of things to come. But let me know your thoughts on the video. Let me know your thoughts on the wheel. And let me know your thoughts on bar first at night. Thank you so much for joining as always guys, I shall see you in the next video, goodbye.